ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very special interview. Susan Zinn, you are an adolescent and adult psychotherapist with specialty in mental health, trauma, right? Did I say that right? And eating disorders. And eating disorders. You and I have been mm -hmm. talking about how, I'm Dr. Larry Burchette, coming to you from the front lines in the ER. I'm seeing a lot of people that are very, that actually come into the ER with mental health issues, anxiety, a lot of things going on related to coronavirus, being on quarantine. You and I have already had some really good conversations about this, and we want to put good information out there for people that doesn't freak them out, but gives them some tools on how to get through this good time. So thank you so much, Susie, for doing thanks, this interview. Thanks, um, I kind of want to just turn it over to you for a minute and hear what you're seeing in your office, what people are kind of telling you, and, and what you're advising people moving forward in this time. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Larry, so much. Um, um, really, what the biggest issue that's going on at this point is that we've kind of gotten over, oh, this may be sort of a short-term issue that we're dealing with. And now the uncertainty is starting to roll in and people's new norm normal is starting to say, I don't really know what to do. And unfortunately, when we have uncertainty, people start to gain more and more anxiety because they feel out of control and the panic starts setting in. So right now, so what we're really- you, Let me slow you down a little bit. So uncertainty about how long this is going to last, how many people are going to get sick, yes. how bad it's going to be. That kind I think of that right now what people are doing is they're flooding themselves with so much information and not necessarily credible sources as well. So they're, so they're hearing things through friends, they're hearing through things through media, social media, and they're just feeling overwhelmed. And what they're doing is all day long, they're just flooding their nervous systems with information, making us feel hyper- hyper vigilant, hyper alert, um, without kind of being able to allow our nervous systems to settle down. And we're not supposed to be walking around like that. And we're only supposed to stay in hyper alert for 47 seconds in a life and death situation. So everyone is afraid. I mean, you can't help it, but to walk around and seeing all the stores closed or the children are at home at school, um, people's businesses, people are losing their jobs. I mean, there's so much uncertainty about what's gonna happen for their health, their finances, their well-being, um, that now more than ever, people have to really be focusing on taking care of their mental health. God, that was an incredible Honest. summary of kind of where we're at, not knowing what to expect, you know, like what's going to happen with the economy, how long are we going to be on lockdown, all of this uncertainty, and then how it affects your body mm -hmm. and, and your mind. So, so people are kind of feeling stressed out by this, on edge, increased anxiety. What are some of your, how do you, from your perspective, and people are kind of coming into your office, how does that negatively affect them? How, how are you seeing it play out? Right. Yeah, I, I think that there's there's a lot of different ways, both as, as you're seeing within the ER, both physically and mentally, that it's sort of playing out with people. Um, from my perspective, it's definitely the increase of anxiety and watching hours and hours of Netflix without doing any self-care and just wanting to sort of escape from the reality of what they're experiencing uh, to, to also the physical symptoms of gastrointestinal issues, issues, issues um, pain issues of chronic illnesses, feeling flares within their systems, mm -hmm. headaches, uh, uh, all kinds of different issues that we're seeing at this point because the body can only sort of store so much uh, anxiety and, and feels of, of, of uncertainty that, you know, we're all staying in this hyper alert stage. So it's, 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 it's mental experience, uh, symptoms. God, symptoms I, I would totally echo exactly what you're saying about seeing. I, I've talked several times about how I had a, a patient come in with a flank, frank panic attack from, you know, obsessively reading the news. She couldn't, she had a history of depression and mm -hmm. anxiety to begin with, and she couldn't stop reading the news. She stayed up all night long reading headlines and stuff and then worked herself up into this totally stressed out state and lost it and came in. She was in tears, just total panic attack in the ER. But then I also want to echo what you said about 
psychosomatic illness where you're seeing manifestations of these symptoms in the body chest pains and shortness of breath a lot of people can have abdominal pain and stuff like that i definitely think about that when i'm in the er and i see people come in and it's part of a sign of this time of being stressed out i want to ask you a question because you said you know we're kind of in denial about everything that's going on this has just been like kind of a week of netflix and chill and whatever and not doing any self-care what would Paint a picture of, okay, we're at home, what's a healthier way to do it? What kinds of self-care should are you advising people to be doing instead of just like laying on the couch, melting your brain all day for the quarantine? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think we've got to start with the basics, which is how we're creating structure and routine in our, li- our lives. Our body loves to have routine. routines. We love to, love to anticipate what's going to, going to happen. And unless the body feels stressed because we know where we're going to eat. We know where we're going to sleep. We know where we're going to do work. We know where we're going to exercise. We know where we're going to socialize. And so the more structure, and I really feel like I can't reiterate that enough of how important that is at this point, the more, the more structure that we have, the better our mental health is going to be. So whether it's putting up a, 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 a chart in your house, in your house, if you have children or as an individual of just how you're going to sort of divide your life is so important. And even I think it's important within that worry to block that out in your day as well. Give yourself a time frame when you want to, if you, if you feel, you feel like you need to into your schedule and you're not allowing yourself just to sort of to ruminate throughout the day about all of these uncertainties or things that you can't control. So that really allows you to kind of have a framework of allowing your body to be able to calm down because you're anticipating what's coming next. That would be the first one. The second is the importance of socialization. We're human beings. The way we heal is through contact. The very thing that we can, that we cannot cannot do right right now without touch. What we do, and we at home, you're not partnered. You don't have children. You don't have a have a community at home that you're really making sure that you're creating a space and time in order to connect with people. And that may be taking six feet apart walks together or hikes in order to to get yourself yourself out and in order to get some of that contact, or that may be virtually. Um, I'm seeing people do amazing things online with virtual cocktail hours or virtual groups. I'm hearing Pictionary going on virtually around the country. I'm hearing charade charade games, um, all these type of various ways that we're using social media in order to really connect with people. And then thirdly, really the importance is, is, is really expressing your feelings, reaching out to people, sending photos, expressing your affection and love, because we know that when we actually are expressing our, our feelings, that it, it reduces our stress levels. So now more than ever, the importance of socialization, the, 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 the importance of communicating affection and our love for people is so important in order for people to feel less stressed and to feel more secure during this time of uncertainty. Gosh, part of me wanted to talk about each thing you were talking about. That was such incredible advice. Um, the first thing that you said, God, what was the first thing that you said? Oh, a routine and a, and a schedule and kind of giving your brain, you know, mm-hmm. something to expect and anticipate. A couple of things that came to mind to me was to bounce off what you said earlier this is there's so much uncertainty out there how long is this thing going to last and how bad is it going to be and is it going to get me and am i going to be okay and then having a schedule where you know that at certain times you're going to have meals and breakfast and go for a walk and do whatever and whatever your routine is really gives a sense to me a couple things one is certainty in this in the setting and there's so much we don't know Mm -hmm. you know control certainty in your immediate environment, what to expect. I mean, that made me, just listening to you say that, I was like, oh, I need to get on more of a schedule. That would help me feel better. Give me give me a sense yeah. of certainty. And the second thing it would give me is a sense of control. There's so many things that I yes. don't have control over out there in the world. I have no control. And I'm a doctor in this, you know, in this setting, just to talk about how this helps me. But I don't have control over the testing that I have. I don't have control over how many people are going to get sick and come in. I have no control over the politics and 
the bigger picture stuff, not only how far this virus is going to go, but I absolutely have con you know control over my day and what I do and my routine, and that that just feels better. You, it's something something that makes me feel better, and it's really silly to say this, but it's cleaning my room and making my bed. You know, it gives me these little bits yeah. of control that I would say make a, a a difference in in a time like this. Um, and I think that we're going to need to take things day by day. Sometimes we're going to need to take them hour by hour. And sometimes we're going to need to take them minute by minute. So just the fact of my room is clean and feeling that agency, seeing control over that, over that allows our body to relax a little bit and not feel so stressed because that's something that you can do, that you, you do have control over. And it's a, such a great point. Um, really keeping your environment where, where we're spending most of our time super neat and tidy at this point this point is so important and so I heard you say three things I want to try to summarize them and make sure I've got them number one is um, maintaining a schedule number two was socializing <laughs> and figuring out a way to do that with social media virtually if it's not possible you know to maintain the appropriate social distancing but socializing and the number three is expressing your emotions and being able to to put it out I think all those are such I think that's a just a great thing to initially tell people on what to do, how to get through this. I know we don't have a ton of time today. I, I got. Can I add another one for you? Yes, please. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing that I'm really seeing people and we're really encouraging people is that we're still human, and that they and that things can do is humor and we can add fun. And so, just because we're mm -hmm. isolated doesn't mean that we don't still get to enjoy life, and we have to be able to add joy into our lives right now more than ever. It's so important. It's not a constant state like happiness that we're trying to seek, but it's moments that we actually feel better, better and into our nervous system, into our being, into our day, 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 then and the next overwhelmed. Um, so have fun. I mean, I call out to the comedians, to all the people that have humor that to be expressing it at this point, this point and then also, also have jokes there's some great ones out there um how are you playing playing games other as i said i love the pictionary games the the uh, charades um cooking friends whatever it may be that's actually just allowing some joy within our days and virtually i mean you're cooking virtually with our friends um so um, so that because that that's so important for our mental health is for us is for us to have have to have these have these moments, moments to, to kind of that's such a great point that's such a great point I feel like in the middle of this all of these like memes on social media they're so funny and I and I feel like a need for them anymore yeah. one of my favorite ones and I feel terrible admitting it is it's this black guy and the voice comes on and it says I don't know if you've seen this one but it says okay you've got two options a, you can stay at home with your family, and he goes, B, no, B, doesn't even hear the second option for that one. I think that it's so terrible, but yeah. it's so funny. Yeah. I feel like the comedians are going to save us. Yeah. Like, it's so needed now. I, I couldn't agree yeah. more. <laughs> Stuff's so yeah. Funny. So try to laugh every day. Try to find humor. I'm also hearing people actually doing new things of self-mastery, taking the time to challenge themselves to be better cooks or learning how to do some sort of art project. Um, challenging their friends to be in a workout class with them of, of feeling fitter and some, or in some capacity, getting their heart rates, learning how to jump rope, um, whatever it may be, this is a time for, for you to really sort of stretch that way and really making sure that you're finding joy in your life. God, that's so good. This is so good. You are so good. I, I'm sitting here and I saw one of my buddies who he's continuing to do CrossFit at home now. He's still eating good. And I'll be honest, like the last few days I've been like, we, you know, I've kind of just gone on this thing where I'm like, great, it's time to be a slug. But you're right, like, you're going to have to figure out a way to kind of have your routines, take care of yourself, stay in shape. It's inspiring. This is great. Can I ask you, I know we have to go in a minute. Can I ask you one question? I got a really good kind of, it's almost a clinical question sure. from somebody who sure. works in the mental health space. Um, this is from Kristen Reese, who I went to high school with, um, works at a mental health called Rediscovering You. Um, let me throw a couple of these out and you can kind of, 
you know, respond how you see fit. Knowing that eating disorder behavior thrives in isolation, how would you support an individual with active eating disorder during the quarantine? I think you touched on some of this stuff. And then um, how does the quarantine and COVID impact those with a, with a trauma history? Are you seeing an increase in individuals seeking support for trauma related to this pandemic? Yeah, both, both, of, both of those are great, those are great questions, and the question and they're super important. Actually, today I just saw that a few of the clinics are doing virtual outpatient programs, which is amazing. I just saw Renfrew this morning just posted that. So I think that the community communities are starting to really folk, to refocus and to be able to support people who actually need support. You're also seeing from the medical community that people are doing virtual check-ins and appointments and appointments now, now, which is when they're, when they're needing. So if, if it is someone who's struggling or he's recovered from eating, eating disorder and had some affiliate, affiliation, affiliation with a clinic, we have alumni groups and they have various groups going on and they will be doing virtual groups and virtual, virtual connect, connect in order to support them now. Um, outside of that, if it's not someone that's so had a severe symptom, uh, issue in order to seek out treatment in that capacity, then it's going back to what we really discussed and actually keeping the structure, making sure that they're they're allowing as much positivity in their life as possible and much, much staying away from social media, staying away from the news resources, um, unless they're credible, really limiting to five minutes a day. Because if you're at home, nothing's really changing. It's not really impacting you. You don't need to stay and re-traumatize yourself by watching this over and over and staying in a hypervigilant a uh, nervous system response. So it's more than ever, ever for eating disorder that they really maintain as much structure, as much positivity, as much fun in their lives. Um, and they know how to do it if they're in recovery because they, they were taught that. Mm -hmm. have, to go back, have to go back to their meal planning. They have to go back to their routines. They have to go back to their check-ins. They have to go have to go back to their case of support, really making sure that they're doing what they need to do rather than getting back into that traumatized part of their brain that's like, hey, things are bad. Let me go back to my negative coping skills. And that goes with substance abuse too or any or any other type of of issue. I'm hearing people with OCD feeling like those are really clicking kicking up um, immensely at this point too right now. Mm -hmm. um, so structure, 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 positivity, so support, uh, socialization when we can get it. Are, As for it's, it's so you, asked, good. you asked the That's question. so good and so helpful. As for trauma, yes, uh, we're seeing that people with, especially with childhood traumas, it, it's really kicking up a lot at this point because anytime, anytime there's, anytime there's uncertainty that appropriately as, hey, I'm in danger. I'm starting to go into fight or flight. I'd recommended for my trauma survivors because I see so many in my practice is really talking to their elders or talking to other people that have had life experience because by doing that they can actually really, actually really hear about hear about resiliency and how people have gotten through things. It may not be look exactly like as coronavirus is now, but they've been through things and they've actually had tools and skills in order for them to develop that resiliency and that strength and that post traumatic growth. And those are the them. I would hear about how people had meaning making out of hard times in order to turn it into something that was positive. Um, and that hopefulness and that faith will actually really allow some of that, some of those, those demons or some of those feelings that they have around their, their, their past traumas to calm down because they're going to feel more control and agency by getting that support. Yeah, that's so good. You're so, your advice is incredible, and it's so much stuff we need to hear and we're not getting enough of from the mainstream media. Thank you so much. I want to be mindful of your time. I think we've come to an end of this one. Do you need to go? We're good, yeah. So thank you so much, Larry, for your time. I appreciate it, too, and to spread the message to everyone and people keeping as positive as they can as and connected as they can during these, during these times. Susie, we're going to... Where can people find you on Commun social media? You have uh, an Instagram that you're active on that has very supportive posts. At Susan's in.
Zen Therapy on Instagram. And my website is just susanzentherapy.com too. Um, you guys can always reach out to me. Send me your questions. I hope that we'll be able to do another one of these with Susie Zen. She was so good. Um, this has been super helpful for me. I'm going to add more structure, routine, and self-care into what I'm doing. The Netflix uh, brain-melting binge will need to come to an end. Maybe there'll be a little bit of that still, but balance it out more. Thank you very much, Susie. This was great. Let's do it again. Have a great day.